sponge holder, but I'm going to teach everybody how to make it, and then I'm going to teach you how to glaze it. So it's a whole complete thing, the whole kit and caboodle. And if you didn't check out the Harvest Tankard tutorial that I did, you should check that out. I did the tutorial on making them, the tutorial on glazing them, and then here's two of the finished Harvest Tankards. And they were glazed using Paula's Colors for Earth color concentrates for the applique, and then the body was done with my celadons. This is my Wild Aster, and the yellow one is my Buttercup. So check all of that out. Again, that's all on Clayshare. All right, let's go down to Texas and see how Paula is doing. Hopefully it's cooled off down there for her, but I don't know. We're going to see. Hey, Paula, how you doing? Hi there. I'm doing great. It has cooled off a little bit. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Oh, good. So, Thank goodness. Awesome. Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. So I'm going to oh, turn the camera. So welcome. Okay. I do want to remind everybody while I first got you here that Paula is offering 10% off at ColorsForEarth.com with the code CS92023. Premium members of Clayshare, you guys get a 20% discount. And that is a special code, which is only available on ClaysharePrime.com, or you'll get it next in the broadcast that I'm doing for you. So just, okay. just a awesome. little. Oh, and the giveaway. We didn't mention the giveaway. Paula, do you want to share that you're doing a giveaway today? Uh, you've got the list in front of you. I, I do. I'll do it. So Paula's <laughs> giving <great>. away <laughs> two prizes. She has a color concentrate kit, 14 colors of her color concentrates, and a five-piece brush set. It's the Clay Share brush set. That's the two new premium stencil brushes and two soft mop brushes and a Kolinsky liner. So thank you, Paula. You're welcome. That's pretty much what I'm going to be using uh, tonight. So this is the plate. Um, I initially did, this is an earthenware piece. Um, you can see that the flowers are different colors. They're really the same colors, but I did it a different way just in case somebody wanted something whiter um, on the stoneware one that I did versus the earthenware. So this one has the background all over, the pattern on it, and then everything painted on top. So what I did on this plate, which could be done on either earthenware or the stoneware, I used the wax off resist okay and i mask off the pattern area with that if you've never used it i just used an old brush applied a good generous coat and then it peels back and it relieves and shows you the white bisque so that you can move forward from there so that's kind of a fun thing so and i'm going to go over the background first but i wanted to show you this plate i put the pattern on i did the background and then the neat thing I figured out was if I wanted this off of there, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Moo erasers. Those of us that do a lot of drawing and art stuff have them. You can actually take the Moo eraser and erase the product off. Is that that's what I did on all of this area? Isn't that pretty cool that you can do that? I thought that was amazing. So it's if so you cool. Have, yeah, if you don't have the um, the wax resist then this is another way that you can do that and i'll do the rest of that in a minute so i just thought that was kind of cool it's just called a moo eraser you can find it at any of your arts supply places okay so the first thing you need to do is uh transfer your pattern to the tissue this is just cheap tissue paper i used a pencil and drew over my pattern the pattern is provided kevin has that out there for you and then i have it on my blog also if you need it there so I transferred it. This is an earthenware piece that I'm working on tonight. And I used the Stadler Triplus Fine Liner, which is like a Sharpie point. It's a water-based marker. And that's how I went over the pencil lines. It bled through. And then I just, and you can come in and actually physically draw on the piece with this and not have any problem. If you're on stoneware, you can get away with the ultra fine Sharpie marker. I don't use the Sharpie on earthenware because it tends to repel. It burns off, but it also burns off any color that's on top of it. So that would not be my recommendation for the earthenware. Okay. So we're going to just pretend that this is not here. I'm going to start with the uh, three, four inch mop, just a soft mop brush. And what I've got here on my palette is 650. These are the color strokes tonight. So I'm working mostly until I do my outlining with the color strokes, which are our opaque underglaze. They have a little bit of a um, tiny bit of clay in them, pigment, 
and then they have an opaque base in them to make them more opaque than what the color concentrates are. The concentrates are translucent, these are opaque. So I've got 650 light cerulean, I've got 651 cerulean, and I've got 652 deep cerulean. So all three of those. And what I've done is put a little bit out and then I've got water in another well. So I'm gonna make a, what I call a wash. So I start with water, always dampen your brush, blot it, and I'm gonna scoop a generous amount of that lighter color in there and mix it up. And I'm gonna put two scoops, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same and do the next one, which is Cerulean 651. And I'm gonna do it again with 652. All right, so then um, I like to dampen my brush. So I'm going to dampen that mop brush, kind of blot out some of that water. It holds so much product that um, you could have a ton of it on there. So I'm just going to dip in. Now, remember when you make a wash, the color is heavier than the water. It falls to the bottom, okay? And I'm just going to take this and just kind of swish it across here. Now, when you add water to those watercolor markers, you're going to start bleeding or it's going to start fading away, okay? You can also have the water in your brush and just pick up a little bit of the pure color if you wanted that stronger and just kind of streak it. So because that mop brush, you see how fuzzy it is on the end? You can actually get those lines or the striations of the color, okay? And then you can go into the next color, the 51, the next darkest, and add some of it to the background also. Just remember that color's in the bottom of the well and you just streak it on there, here and there. And then I'm just gonna use the um, wet brush. I'm gonna tip into the 652, which is the darker color and kind of work that into the tip and you're gonna really be able to see this color. So it's a way just to get kind of a streaky background and it really depends on how heavy you want the color, okay? And then I'm gonna, with that damp brush, I'm going to dampen it just a little bit more and I'm going to pick up 640, which is navy blue. And in the bottom and the left side, I made it darker. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have that damp brush. I'm going to tip into the 640 just a little bit, kind of work that into the tip of my brush. And then I'm going to just add that to this lower side. See how it just streaks up. And it really depends on how strong you want this. You can keep adding, but make sure you keep it towards the bottom, okay? You can rinse the brush and even come back if you see an area, because they're in a gel base, if I don't, my flower is gonna be on top of there, it doesn't really matter. But if you had something you didn't like, you could just take water in that brush and lightly come off of there, okay? So with those colors, then we're gonna go to this piece, the magic of the camera, right? And you've got this type of a look. Now you can come in and you can add black now, or you can add it later. I'm gonna wait and add some more later on that other piece. But again, you take the Moo eraser and just erase off any of that color. Uh, this is an earthenware piece just FYI, I think it is. Yes, it is. I was thinking I did that. Trying to find pieces that I could paint this on. So just erase it off of there, which I thought was, you know, you never know till you try something, right? Um, and this plate has, in case somebody asked, there's red markings underneath. It was a plate that uh, we actually were using up at Wisconsin for the show. And I just painted over the top of it because I didn't want to have to fire the watercolor marker off, okay? So then we're gonna take a few colors and we're gonna, I'm gonna get rid of all this. Actually, I can just grab another palette instead. Oh, no, you know what? I forgot something. We need to put some gray in that background also. So 604 ash gray is another one and I'm gonna just dampen my brush once again, grab a little bit of that gray. 
And I just added some of the gray more towards the top. So you could do any color combination you want. This is just happened to be what I picked out. I tend to gravitate towards blues. Okay, so I think you can see that there's some gray. So that kind of tones it down a little bit. Okay, so these are, like I said, the um, opaque underglazes, which um, are nice. They can be, you, you could use your color concentrates by all means. If you did, I would um, add the medium to it, the gloss medium, CSP01, okay? So I'm gonna put out some white, the 602, and then we're gonna do um, 650, which is the light cerulean, and we're gonna have the gray, believe it or not. So these are the colors that are gonna be on the flower. I'm going to switch and go to the smaller mop, which is in that kit we're giving away. This is the half inch mop. Once again, dampen your brush, blot out the moisture. So I'm going to fully load that mop with the white. And I'm going to drag one side. When I say drag, I'm going to take this side of it. And I'm going to drag one side with the blue, turn it over, and drag the other side with the gray. Okay. Um, if you were on top of a color like I was here, you can block in with one to two coats of the white if you want your flower more white, or you can do like I've done here and mask it off or erase it off, and this is just a fun way to be able to get that on there, okay? So just start on the outside of your petal and press down, pull, pull, and come to the center. Grab more white, more blue, more gray. And so you can turn it one way or the other. So it just kind of blends all those colors in there together for you, which is nice. And I'm not rinsing my brush. I'm just going back and grabbing all of those, press, and then just come to the, so when you come, you're just coming off, kind of almost like off on the chisel edge. And the only reason I'm doing that is just to keep it within the space. So you can kind of brush over it and blend those colors together. If you have enough on your brush that you can do two strokes, you can do that. So if I wanted to do this one here and add a little bit right there and then grab more and more. So I'm just reloading on the chisel edge, okay? And Jess, you'll let me know if anybody has questions, right? Oh, we got a few. I just don't want to interrupt you. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm just going to block these in with the same motion and method. So they it. were asking about that tracing pencil. What kind is that? So that is a Statler Tri Plus Fine Liner. And Amazon has um, a big box. Oh, here we go. How's that? Ah, and see. it's like... 20 ish dollars it's a great price so search i mean they have uh with some smaller kits but you get the better deal when you buy that big one on amazon that's the cheapest i have found anywhere is that 36 and, pack okay. and there was a question will the moo eraser erase the lines on your flower for your flower no because it's a water-based marker and it seeps into the best because it's porous so no it will not they will just burn off. And then the other question we have is, what do you have your plate sitting on? Oh, just a little turntable, like a Lazy Susan, in case I need it just anywhere. Amazon, right? We, we buy anything on Amazon, I think. <laughs> I don't remember where I got that particular one. I have a couple of different ones. Uh, you could have it sitting on your banding wheel. You know, um, that would work too. So I'm just blocking in and filling those in so you get gray you get blue you get white now you're going to say well how do you get to those smaller ones you're just going to stand up more on the chisel edge when you're doing it so i'm on this chisel like this instead of the flat like that and i'm just going to block those in the same way now i am only doing um one coat on these because it's hard if you try to do multiple coats to see the lines that variegate through them. So 
I would say just one code's all you need. And then you can just turn in different directions how you pull that brush. So, and you could use a round brush if you wanted. I just used the mop because, well, because they were, I just loaded the wrong side. Um, they were new out there and I know a lot of people have mops. And so I thought it would show you a different way that you can use them. This is a white goat hair mop. So it's very, very soft. It would be something that you would uh, put glaze on with. Okay, so just press, press and pull. I'm not gonna worry. If I have a little bit of white showing around it, I'm not gonna worry about that because your outline will cover it. And then I'm gonna show you that you can put your pattern back on if you need to. So that's kind of cool. All right, so just one coat. But if you were trying to cover over this, okay, let's just say that um, you didn't have an eraser and you put the pattern on beforehand, or even if you put it on after, you could come in and you can do just the white. I would block it out. I did not on that first plate and it came out a little darker because of the background, but you could just come in here and block in white to make that blue go away in the background, basically is what you're doing. So you're just trying to cover that. So you can see how that just, so that's how you would uh, get away with that. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. I try to show you different ones so that um, if you don't have something, you can figure out a way to do it, right? Okay, so then I'm gonna take uh, some of that same, we're gonna do the 651 blue. That's the middle shade of blue. And we're gonna do a little bit of the 652. And like I said, you could change the colors. So I'm gonna fully load, meaning shampoo that brush, okay, with that middle, middle blue. And now I'm gonna, create some lines coming out from the center. So I'm not gonna use it on the flat. I'm gonna use it on the chisel. I'm gonna turn it up on that point and you can just pull. You could do this with a liner, but once again, I like to switch things up and show you different ways to do things um, and using the same brush that you blocked in with. So constantly turn your piece, okay? And just pull in all these little detail lines. It just adds more blue to that center and makes it nice and fun. Different lengths, try to make them short and long, not all the same length. Okay. And then do the same. You're only gonna get a couple, you've got littler petals up here. So less pressure on the brush, staying more up on that chisel. And you see how I'm just on that little chisel edge there to create that. I just thought this would be something fun and simple, but um, elegant that you guys might like, something different. It was different for me, kind of out of my box, <laughs> so to speak. Any questions so far, Jess? There was the Moo eraser. Will that also work on stoneware as well as earthenware? It should. I don't know any reason why it wouldn't, other than the stoneware bisque is more porous. So you may want to go to the wax off resist and resist it instead of trying to um, erase it. But I would just test it on a piece of, of stoneware bisque that you have sitting there. Um, and I don't have, yeah, I don't have one back here in front of me, or I would test it in front of you. Okay. So then if you want the centers a little darker, I'm gonna load in that 652 deep cerulean and you can add some of those in here, but I'm not gonna add as much. So I'm gonna keep it closer to the center. I mean, so there's really, you can do this so many different ways and it just depends on how much work you want to do. Okay, and if you're, brush starts coming apart like that, where it's getting an opening, you need to reload so that you can keep that chisel edge or go to a liner brush if you want. I, like I said, I just thought this was kind of fun to 
be able to do it with this brush. And because these are opaque underglazes, um, they're not going to look opaque the way we're doing them because we're only putting, you know, very light coats on there. So they're going to be more transparent. Any other questions? We just have a few folks that I think are joining a little later. They don't understand how you got the flower pattern to stand out from the background because I think they missed where you okay. talked about using the latex resist or the moo eraser. Okay, so I just took, while well, this is drying for a second, um, I took uh, the pattern and put it on tissue with the pencil. Actually, I'm going to turn on my fan for two seconds. And then I used the Statler Tri Plus Fine Liner to transfer to, so I just drew over the pencil lines and it came out red on this. And you can kind of see the red lines there. So if you have the background all over and you put your pattern on, you can block out your flowers in white, or you could have taken the resist, the wax off resist, and you can block, put it all over your flower, your design, whatever it happens to be, and then put your background on, and then you peel that off, and it's a white um, area. And that's what I did on this one so that I got a nice white, white background on top of putting white with my colors that I put on there. So that was kind of fun. This one is stoneware, and I used the uh, resist on that one. Okay. Um, on stoneware, you can use the Sharpie Fine Point to transfer a pattern. Um, you could sketch with a pencil, you could sketch with those. Statler Tri Plus, those work also. Um, and did you guys know, just because we're doing this, if you put a pencil or something underneath your plate and raise it up when you're trying to dry something, it's going to dry quicker than if you set it down onto the surface, because when you set it down, your foot is touching your surface and keeping that moist underneath. So here again, while well, that's drying for just a second, here's your two different ones. If you want it really white, which this one over here on the right, um, either use the resist and block it out and then peel it off, or you need to put on one to two coats of the white before you start the colors. This one has the background underneath it and then just painted the flowers, which is basically what this guy is here. Okay, so while this is drying, I'm going to show you on this one, you're going to take that, you can either use the mop or you can take the stencil brush. So this is the size 14, which is one of them that's in that kit that we're giving away. And I'm going to get some of the blackout, the 601 coal black. And I need to get a new, you need to have uh, shop towels. They're more durable. They don't get the fuzziness when you're doing any kind of stencil work. So I'm going to load that brush. This is the premium brush. It's a synthetic hair. It is not a natural hair. So I'm going to load it. I'm going to pounce out and get that brush loaded. And then I'm going to go to my shop towel and take just a little bit off just by doing a circle. And then you can take and you can just streak this onto the piece. And usually I do it from the bottom up. And I just thought that was the coolest way to use your stencil brush to get more lines. And I mainly have these coming from the bottom and on that right side. As you need more, tap it in, wipe off some. You're wiping it off because you don't want this to be a solid area. You don't want it to be like you're painting, painting. You're dry brushing, basically. And so you're creating this shadow. And I'm, I know my petals are down to here. I probably won't use this one, but just to give you. So I'm keeping it away from the top. I did have some kind of underneath those other flowers, just kind of for a shadow. And you can see that on this guy here. So you see what, what we're creating. So I'm just pulling that up, but it's a good idea to come from this direction to add that, okay? Um, I think you have more control that way, for sure. And so that's just with, that's how I put the black on here. You could also use 
the mop brush if you wanted. And I'll show you, I'm kind of drying this out because I want it fairly dry. And then I'm just going to tip just the tip of it. And I'm going to kind of work that in, but also kind of take some off. And you could take that and you could feather up from the bottom. Think of a feather, you're really light, okay? And that's another way to create that texture to it. You could do this and do like, uh, gosh, barn wood. I mean, there's so many different ways you could do, you know, like different color combinations. So your imagination is your limitation on that for sure. Okay, so then between the petals, and I've shown this in a couple of different classes, but just so that everybody knows, you can take that water-based marker. And if you're unsure where, I'm gonna zoom in just a hair or more and you can take and just make little dots don't push hard but just make little dots where your petals are you can also retrace your design on through the tissue if you want but this is going to help you be able to know where to outline and know where to shade if you want to do all of those types of things any questions jess while I'm doing Folks this. are just asking where the pattern is for this. Now we shared the links in the broadcast. You can always go to colorsforearth.com. And if you go to the blog, she has everything there, but I am um, sharing the link again. So folks can okay. get the stencil. Thank you. Yeah, and I did put the list of colors and everything on there. So you get a pattern like this with all the colors listed and the brushes and everything are there. Um, and I don't have next week's project done, but um, it's going to be a, a, a simple rooster. I did one the other night and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's way too long. <laughs> that ain't going to work. <laughs> so that'll be another class at another time. So, OK, so then we're going to do what's called Sumi shading. OK, so we're going to shade between I'm trying to find places to move things to move. Um, so what I do with the medium semi brush, I'm gonna water load, drag off to a point. So I'm removing the excess water. I'm dragging, I'm turning it over, dragging again, turn it over, drag again, okay? Let me back back off a little bit. Okay, so every time I go to rinse my brush, that's what I'm doing, okay? Then when you get done dragging off the excess water, I'm tipping into, the deep cerulean 652 and i'm going to tuck it near the center and i'm going to go between the petals rinse my brush water load drag off to a point tip see how you can create a shadow between those petals how are we doing on time jess we're at 5 30 so you've got uh 25 minutes Okay, I'm hurrying. I always do that. I well, don't <laughs> hurry. Don't I thought you were funny last week since you were on there a long time. <laughs> oh my gosh, that glazing. And you know, I had to come back the next day and finish the glazing because everything was so wet. But that was like a two hour glazing class almost. It was so long. I'm, it should not have been so long. <laughs> um, and I, we only got one thing glazed. Like it just took so long. <laughs> So constantly rinse your brush, drag off to a point, tip into the color, and tuck that color where you want it. So tucking means aim the brush where you want it. I know last week we had somebody ask about that. And then kind of pull it or slide down between. So up here, even if my brush strokes that I applied the color to the petals are different than what my pattern was, all I did when I marked my uh, petal design, I just marked it so that I knew where my brush marks were. It doesn't matter what the pattern was because I never paint. I'm always painting larger than what I have designed it for. So I'm just constantly going back and re-tipping and then tucking it in and kind of walking it up one side or the other that I feel like it needs to be a shadow. So tuck it in, sit it down, sit it down. So I'm pushing all the way down with that. 
don't be afraid. Water's your friend. And these are my semi brushes that I created like 30, 29, 30 years ago. They're black squirrel hair, so they're natural hair. They're really soft, and they are completely different than the um, over-the-counter, so to speak, semi brushes, right, Jess? Uh, those are completely pony different pony hair and they're coarser. These are a softer hair, uh, like the hair on your head. It's, it's a natural hair. Okay, so I'm just adding that shadow behind each petal. Tuck it in, sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 I call it. And walk it to the right and walk it to the left. And then I'm going to come up behind some of those. Okay, and you can switch and go to the, uh, you could go to the small, that was the medium semi, but you could also use the small on your smaller pieces. If you feel like you got on something you don't like, you can quickly take a clean brush and water and just soften that or move it around, push it back in, whatever you want to call it, okay? All right, so I ended up getting this one dirty with the black but that's okay so i'm going to take and do the um 651 let's see if i can get this on here and and i'm going to just stipple in the center so stippling is pouncing move that so you're basically pouncing in and when you do that you're getting highs and lows because you're depositing um, different amount of color in that area. And I kind of lost this one. Now, let me show you something that if you decide, um, thought I left that brush out. Yes, I did. You can take a Taflon square shader, dampen it. This is the 2200 number eight that I have here. And you can actually push because the color is in a gel base. I can push that color back off wipe some of it off of my brush over on a paper towel because if you just keep moving it around that's what you're doing is moving you're not removing any of it so as you get some of it then wipe your brush off so you could do that i could have come up here and did the same thing if i wanted to make that uh, larger but the colors are going to cover it see how it with the gel base it allows you to move that around you have some open time in other words Okay, so you can see the centers there. All right, so let's go back and triple that back in there. And we're going to use um, a couple of different colors. This is 651 that I'm using to start with. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of the 652, the darker color. Count it in and rub some of that off. And now I'm going to kind of keep that towards the bottom of the area. So I'm just kind of on its edge, but enough that I can get it to touch to that surface about halfway or so. And then if you take a whole bunch of the paint out, you can gently just tap on the top part and you're getting like little dots is what you're getting. Okay. And then I can go to the um, 640, the navy blue. This is a pint size bottle. It's the only one I had open. <laughs> it's a, a big, big bottle. bottle. <laughs> <laughs> well, serious painter, right? <laughs> Any other questions about the stippling with the stencil? No, nope, we're getting. People love your colors and they love the way you explain your brush strokes to everybody. Thank you. Well, if if you succeed, then I succeed. I've always said that. So I've added the 640, which is navy blue, and I'm going to just barely kind of touch the bottom. And I think you can kind of see it's kind of speckledy. So in other words, if you're just barely touching it, you see it just gives a little tiny dot pattern is what you're doing. It's hard to see when you've got all that wet uh, color under there. But just tickle it, just barely touch it on the lower side. 
And then because that one's wet, I'm going to grab a smaller one and I'm going to grab the white. So this is the number 12. We do have a set of the stencil brushes and then we have the clay share set. If you just type in clay share in the uh, search bar, it'll bring up the brushes, any of the uh, anything to do with clay share. And then I'm just going to tap this on the top. And I think you can kind of see same thing. It's just making little tiny dots of white to make that lighter at the top. Um, if you have the stubby brush, if you've got it, you can do the centers with the stubby also. Um, and when you clean those brushes, um, just use uh, like a soap cleaner or just water is fine. Okay. Then I came back and I shaded that same water layer drag off to a point, but this time I'm gonna tip into the navy blue and I'm gonna shade the lower side of that center. So it's like floating color. So tuck it in, sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right, walk it to the left. And if you will say that to yourself, you will actually do it, I promise you. I know that sounds goofy, but you'll remember, and then that just adds another. So every layer you add to something, you're building the color up, it's gonna be darker and more intense, okay? So you can see that you can add more black if you want it stronger. Um, it's And you can see all those little stipply, I think you can see that. You can see, it looks like you sat there and put a whole bunch of little dots on it. And all you did was use that stencil brush to apply it, which is kind of cool. It makes your job easier, okay? And then basically all that's left to do is to outline, believe it or not. And I'm gonna do that with the color concentrate black. Now, why am I switching to color concentrate? Is because the concentrate is a translucent or transparent underglaze. It's more concentrated, hence the word concentrate. And it's easier, getting all the water out of there. It's easier to do your detail work with it, okay? You can kind of see some of that. In one, yeah, okay. So this is a CC 101. Um, you could outline it with blue. You could outline it with uh, 140, which is the cobalt blue in the color concentrates. That would work also. So it's really, if you want to keep it kind of monochromatic, you could leave out the black and then uh, detail with the blue. So I'm just going to take my 3600 number two liner, and I don't even have words left on my brush because I use it so much. And I'm thinning down the black with water. If you were to thin down this black compared to this one, you can see it's darker. Some of that's the bottle. But if time you thin this down to get a fine line, it would be grayed out because it's meant for two to three coats as an opaque underglaze. This one is meant for a brush stroke. Okay. Um, I was trying to think. Uh, Kevin, I need, uh, while I'm thinking about it, the lady that won the brush last week, I need an email for her. She's not in my system. Amy? It was Ann uh, Wexler. Is that right? Wenzel. Wenzel. Um, I have her information. We, I'll have okay. Kevin send it to you. Okay. I don't think he sent that one. I just happened to think about that. Okay. So just staying up on the tippy toe. Okay. So press and then lift and just do thick and thin lines. If you do thick and thin, then you don't have to be perfect all the time. That's why I do it. And just little oh, yes. Do you have a distributor in Canada I that don't. sells your color Maybe. concentrates? No, I used to have a glass studio that had some, but I don't. I know there's a lot of people. They can email me and I can give them, you know, what the postage would be. A lot of people do that okay. versus so doing it online. Same thing with the UK. We had a question. Do you have a distributor in the UK? I have, again, I have a glass distributor that does carry some of the color concentrates and kit number one. Of course, they use it on glass. Um, it's called Warm Glass UK. And you can find that on the website, my website. Down at the bottom, there's a, a studio and teacher link. And then it's by state and by country. So press and lift. 
So if you do thick and thin, like I said, you don't have to, and I don't even really, you don't have to follow exact. Okay. And then when you're doing your fine lines, just keep it up on your tippy toe, little tiny fine. How are we doing on time? Okay, we're good. Your edge can be whatever you want. Um, and I want to make sure I show that because I don't think we showed that last week. And if anybody's new, they may not know how to get that nice little edge, that little trick. Okay, so just keep thinning that color. Keep it up on the tippy toes. Long and short. And then I just keep going back and adding. And it's really to your liking how much you want in there. What it does is just create more shadow around that center. Yeah, even the UK or anybody, they can just um, get a hold of me. And usually what I'll do is box it up and then give them the different shipping rates. So I know we have a lot of folks in Australia that yeah, I, I know they have a hard time getting our products, like the products we use here in the U.S., they have a hard time getting. Right. Um, I had somebody in Australia that wanted to carry it, but then I never heard back from them. So I think it just, with COVID and everything, it kind of put things on. But Warm Glass UK does have some of the color concentrates. And if you just talk to them and tell them what you want, I can add it to their, like we just shipped today, um, going out to them. So I can add it to their next shipment that you need to reach out to them and all their information. Um, her name is Hannah and it's on the website at the very bottom under studios and teachers. There's reference of emails, websites, everything. So you can kind of see what they've got and reach out to them. But we have done that for some people before. I and should. I just want a, a little bit of information for folks out there. If there's a product you see and you want your local supplier, like local clay center or clay yeah. supplier to carry it, you you reach out to them and you tell them, oh, I love Paula McCoy's Colors for Earth. I, I wish you would carry them because that's what happens is then they reach out to Paula because Paula, um, usually distributors won't carry a product if the company comes saying, hey, you want to carry my stuff? There has to be a demand for it. Exactly. So the best thing you all can do is reach out to your local clay suppliers and say, hey, this is a really great product. I, I love to use it. You should carry it. And if multiple people do that, then um, then they will. That's that's exactly. how it works. I just had a lady today that said I just contacted three of my studios and uh, they said that they would get a hold of me after the first of the year. You know, it may not be in the budget for this year, but maybe next. So so what I'm doing is just taking the same black and I'm putting little tiny dots. And let me zoom in a little bit. Around that center and that helps frame it. And I'm going to go a little heavier towards the bottom. Now, you could use a dotting tool, a stylus if you wanted. Um, sometimes I do both. I just like using the tip because you get varied sizes depending on how much pressure you put down. And then you can come in. So you just need to kind of shape it. Sometimes I tend to make it too perfect. <laughs> That's where the perfection thing it's like just leave it loose Paula leave it loose which is really hard for me you can even create a divot in the center and what I mean by that is like if I wanted to add some more dots in here and it'll make it look like it's down in there okay and then on the stems you will just come in you can come in with either the black color strokes or the color concentrate either one and create that stem for all of those. Keep your product thin down. Multiple thin coats is better than one thick, heavy coat by all means. So this is the color concentrate, which is the translucent or transparent underglaze. That one's going up to here. And then we've got a stem here. 
And Jess, I don't remember if we said last week, um, we are, I think I got Caddy Wampus here. I'm gonna move my stem over here. Um, that the pieces that I'm painting during the lives, we're gonna actually- That's right. Give we're gonna give some of, some of them away. That's right, that's right. Yeah. So, you know, On each week that, yeah, that Paula's here with us, we're doing the giveaway of the product prizes, her brushes and, and colors. But she's also going to give away the demo pieces. So some lucky people original. are going to get <laughs> yeah. an original by Paula McCoy. So and to be entered in these giveaways, all you do is go to clayshare.com and sign up for our emails. Our premium members are automatically entered. Can't help myself. I know. <laughs> so you don't have to do anything at all. If you're a member, you're just automatically entered in all of our giveaways always. And you do not have to watch to win. We email the winners and let them know that they won. So it's super easy to do. You should do that. So if you didn't sign up yet, well, you can't win tonight. But guess what? You can be entered to win next week. Yeah. And I did send out one of the giveaways from last week today that I happened to have. I think it was Judy that one last week, I had her address, but the other ones I need information on. So I emailed. We'll get it to you. Yeah. Kevin got some of it, Jimmy. It's just that that surprise one that I did. I didn't have a. Uh, <laughs> That's what happens email. when you give away surprise uh -huh. giveaways that aren't scheduled. <laughs> and we'll give these away in the prime, like at the end of the month, right? We'll just yeah, do, yes. all, we'll all do it at the time. end. Okay. That'll yeah, be we'll do it at the end. Away. Okay. So. You just keep coming in and and putting all that detail in. We still got time. Okay, I'll just I can paint all day. Um, <laughs> we have uh, seven minutes. We're good. We're good. Seven? No, okay. we got we got plenty of time. Yeah. Any more questions? So, so just, keep fine. just keep going. Yeah. Okay. So press and lift, press and lift. So what that does is give you thick and thin, okay? Like I said, there is um, a clay share set of brushes which uses um, the two mop brushes, the liner, and I think I put two stencil uh, brushes in there. That way, if you already had some of my brushes, that was another way to get some of the new ones and who can't use an extra liner? You know, when you use your liners on bisque or any of your good brushes on bisque, it tends to wear them down a little bit. So you can always use multiple liners. All right, so then just come in and add those little dots around the center. Just kind of a hit and miss, constantly loading. So change it up, use different colors. Um, you could I very easily turn this into an orange and red poppy. Oh, I can see it as a poppy. Yeah, do more squared off petals as opposed to rounded. I may have to do that since I said that now. Oh, there's certain flowers so I did, gravitate to. That one there looks like a blue Himalayan poppy, actually. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so since I did that little divot on the other one, I'm going to kind of add that there so that you've got it. And then we've got our little guy over here. Need to send that down. So the key is, even though it's an opaque underglaze that I used for the coloring, it doesn't matter because you can do different things. So I had a thicker line, so I'm just going back over that to kind of clean that up. So if you have like a really heavy line somewhere and it's a mistake, say, okay, um, just go back and put a heavy line somewhere else in your design, a couple of them, so that people don't draw their eyes just to that. So that's a way to fix that, okay? And I think Paula needs to treat herself to a new liner. This one's getting kind of a, a blunt end on it. I've used it so much on the they do. Yeah, I mean, when you use them, so just so everybody's aware that, you know, brushes don't last forever, they do wear out. <laughs> yeah, that's why if you'll base coat with a white or something first or any color and then do your design work on top of that, sometimes 
it well it does it makes it more gentle on your brushes so I could have done that. I could have put one to two coats of white and then come in with the other. But just be aware, you know, you don't want to get too heavy or too many coats with your opaque underglaze or even your translucent. Um, you get too heavy, you can have cracking and peeling. So just try to multiple thin coats are better than why I can't preach that enough. <laughs> Because usually that's the reason something happens is because of that. All right, then you're going to sign. And since this is one that's going out, whoops, missed that. You can do that with the same brush. Load again. And you can also, if you needed to, it's hard to talk and write. Um, if you needed to take something off, like I see a little spot over here where I was out, you could take your diamond cord tool and you could just, you know, scratch that off. Or you can make that line a little thicker. Oops, sorry. All right, I want to show them the edge real quick. And then, so make sure you have a turntable for sure. Put that on there. And then you take your one inch foam brush. Okay. This is like a house and I call this the roof. So there's hard plastic in here. You don't want to put that on the edge of your plate. Okay. Let me back off so they can see more. Okay. So you don't want to put that on the edge because it's hard plastic. It's going to pull up. You want to stay up here. So what you're doing is staying right in the middle of that. Okay. So you're staying just right in the middle. I am going to dampen it. I'm going to go into the black color stroke because it is the opaque one. Again, you could use uh, the blues, but since I have the black that comes out to the edge, so I'm going to center it. And then the only reason you have the turntable or a banding wheel is to aid you in moving the plate. So keep it right in the center of that. Apply the same amount of pressure. Turn it over. Use the product on the other side. So this is just aiding you in turning. This will work with any shape. I don't care if it's a petal plate, it's a triangle, a heart rectangle, square, doesn't matter. You can do this nice professional edge with it. And you want to put a couple of coats on, let it dry, and then come back and do a couple more coats. And you have a nice finished piece. How's that? Perfect. Cool. I love it. Okay. So um, if they're not familiar with the kits, um, let me see if I can pull that up for them real quick. Maybe if we have a second with my yeah, uh, let's see here. <laughs> no, I don't have it on here. It doesn't look like I'm just trying to find it. Uh, oh, wait a minute. No, that's not what I want. There we go. Let's see if the clay share kits will come up. No, probably not. Of course not. All right. So I will go back to me. Let's, oops. That didn't work. Oh, oh now oh, there they were. Yeah. They were there. They just they they're like afterthought. Holy moly! They, they just kept going. <laughs> they did. I'm like, what in the heck? So that's <laughs> technology. Like I said, yay! <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna attempt to go back to me. It'll probably switch to a kit and then come back to me. There it did. See, there's the yeah, it did. There's a kit. The three on the bottom and then the clay share color stroke kit is up there and then you could always add other colors to it. So if you just type in clay share on the website, you'll find all different types of things. OK. And now if we can get it back to me, which we may not be able to because my cursor is not moving. So oh, no. there it is. reaction. I don't know. What <laughs> <this is bad. laughs> OK. All right. <laughs> Like I said, technology, what can you say? <laughs> Got to live with it. Can't live without it and can't live with it some of the time. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the project and uh, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, Paula, for another amazing demo. Paula's going to be with us all month long. So if you've loved the last two weeks, well, you got two more coming. So don't worry. So don't worry. It, you, we're only halfway through. And actually, I believe next Wednesday, Paula, um, well, I got gotcha, you. You're going to do the prime time next week, right? So you're doing two with us next Wednesday. 
ask about that. We'll and, play it by ear. We'll play it here. Okay. I'm going to be gone, so I oh, won't be right. here next right. week. But it, but you don't. No pressure. No pressure to Paula there. Um, I, it could be a pre-recorded one, right? It could be pre-recorded. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, don't think I'll even be able to come on to moderate. I just don't think I'll I'll have access to that situation <laughs> I'm going to be. So, all right, we got two prizes to give away. The first one is a set of color concentrates and the second one is a set of Paula's brushes. So I'm just going to read the names. Now remember the way you enter all of our giveaways, you just go to clayshare.com and sign up for our emails. She has so many amazing products. My favorites are the color concentrates. That's the colors you see here. They are a gel based underglaze. They're not clay based, which means they are translucent. You can get beautiful one coat coverage. I use it in my watercolor pottery. They have almost a stained glass effect. That's what I used on my little fishy dishy here is the colors for earth for my fishes. And so you can see that that more light gets through them and they almost look like glass. And I just love that with them. So the first winner tonight is going to be Kathleen Covino. Kathleen, congratulations. You are gonna get yourself a set of colors for earth colors, the color concentrate colors. Um, they're what I started with and I just love them. They're really great. And then our second prize, a second prize is a set of five brushes and that winner is Deborah Whitset. So Deborah, congratulations. You are going to get yourself a set of Paula's brushes. So we will send your email and information over to Paula and then she can reach out to you and get your address and send it to you. That's how it's all done. It's really easy. We just need your email. So that's why you sign up for our email list because we have to have information from you to give to the sponsors so they can send you your prizes. All right. So yes, we're making the Fishy Dishy next in prime time. That is my weekly broadcast that I do for premium members, so it's private. You know, every week we have three live broadcasts. We do a Good Morning Clay Share every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. That is only for our premium members, and it's kind of the news of Clay Share, what's going on. This week we had glaze results, and we talked about glaze combos and everything. So there's always an educational aspect, as well as just a fun way to start your week and get you inspired and going. And then here on Wednesday, that's our really big day, we have our Live at 5 that starts at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, and that is our free broadcast that's open to the world, so everybody everywhere can watch it. And then at 6.15 p.m. Eastern Time, 3.15 p.m. Pacific, I do with a private class, or if I'm away, somebody else fills in, it possibly, we'll see next week. So we're going to be having, um, next week we'll be having that happen if Paula does do that. We'll see. We'll have to play it by ear. So that's what I got. Um, I do have another piece of news that I guess I'll share with you guys. So, you know, every month we have our sponsor and Paula's this month's sponsor. And we had planned to have Clayscapes join us for October, but we've had to switch our schedules around a little bit. Clayscapes is going to be joining us for November. Well, do you remember who was supposed to be November? Yeah, that's right. Mr. Michael Harbridge. He is going to be skipping the line and he is going to be coming in and doing the October. So we do not have to wait till November for Michael. We, he is going to be here just in a couple weeks. So we'll finish with Paula in September and then starting off with our first October, we'll have Michael Harbridge here as the sponsor. And if you have not seen or know about Michael Harbridge yet, you need to look him up. He's on Facebook. He's, his company is learnfiredarts.com. He is amazing. He has done um, I think been with us as sponsors for the last few years and been on Clay Share Con and everything. So he's going to bring some fun stuff. You know it. And he's how I met Paula. So it's really great because through each other, we can expand and grow our Clay Share family. And that's really wonderful. Okay. So that's what I have this week for Clay Share Live. I'm going to take a little break. I'll be back at 6.15 p.m. Eastern and we're going to make the little dish and then we're going to actually glaze it. So it's a, a two-in-one class coming up next. Thanks for being here with me, everybody. And I won't see you next week because I'm going to be away. I'll be back in two weeks. But Paula will be here to fill in. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody.